Elon Musk and NASA have something in common. The billionaire and iconic space agency want people to go places in deep space and discover alien worlds. While the two have very different reasons for their desire, they both face the same limitation of distance, which makes it challenging to build a capable spacecraft. To overcome this problem, NASA and SpaceX have revealed a revolutionary method of propulsion that keeps rockets going forever and ever into deep space. Is it possible that Elon Musk and NASA have finally defied the laws of physics with their latest development? Stay tuned to find out. NASA is on the verge of creating a near-lightspeed engine that defies physics laws, a concept for an engine that can accelerate to 99% the speed of light without using any fuel. That might sound like something out of a science fiction film, but it's not. One of NASA's engineers is working on something similar, and it's rumored to have the potential to defy physics. The planet Earth isn't going to be habitable forever. If the human race is going to survive, one day we'll have to pack up our things and move to another planet. It sounds easy until you realize the vastness of space and even how big our solar system is. No matter where we're going in space, we need to travel fast, and not just at the speed of light either. We're talking about ludicrous speed, but some researchers have designed an impossible engine that violates the laws of physics, and another group of scientists is now saying a warp drive is possible. Is NASA working on this technology? And what does the future hold for space travel? For every action, there's a reaction. That's a principle on which all space rockets operate, blasting propellant in one direction to travel the other. But one NASA engineer believes that he could take us all to the stars without any propellant at all. Designed by David Burns at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama, the helical engine exploits mass-altering effects known to occur at near light speed. Burns has posted a paper describing the concept to NASA's technical report server. He claims to have developed an engine design that might hypothetically speed up to 99% the pace of sunshine without the necessity for propellant. On paper, it works by exploiting the best way mass could change at relative speeds, these speeds that are nearly the pace of sunshine's travel in a vacuum. He's put it to the NASA Technical Stories server below the title Helical Engine. Dr. Burns writes in his paper that his in-space engine might be used for long-term satellites that need to keep traveling without the need for refueling. He added that, quote, it might additionally propel spacecraft throughout interstellar distances, reaching near the pace of sunshine. Light would battle to maintain the speed that these rockets could achieve, altering the eyesight in unusual methods. All pieces behind would flip darkish, and time would seem to slow to a sluggish crawl, and clocks slowed down as well, as planets would also give the appearance of stopping rotation. Dr. Burns' loopy notion is revolutionary, as a result of it eliminating the need for rocket gas. It's been met with skepticism from some corners, but Burns believes his concept is worth pursuing, saying, I'm comfortable with throwing it out there. If someone says it doesn't work, I'll be the first to say it was worth a shot. To move people to Mars and past, rockets equivalent to those produced by NASA and SpaceX would require tons of propellants like liquid hydrogen. The issue is that the extra gasoline you place in, the heavier the ship turns into. Trendy propellant tanks are just too giant for interplanetary journeys. Excessive tech particle accelerators, equivalent to those utilized in Europe's massive Hadron Collider, are used within the helical engine to get around this. Light speed. The engine, described in a recent paper Burns posted to the NASA server, takes advantage of a weird glitch in Einsteinian physics. By accelerating a loop of ions to nearly light speed, then manipulating their velocity, therefore, the laws of relativity, their mass, the engine achieves the ultimate space travel free lunch, a forward thrust without shooting anything behind. To get grips with the principles of Burns' engine, picture a box on a frictionless surface. Inside that box is a rod, along with a ring that can slide. If a spring inside the box gives the ring a push, the ring will slide along the rod one way, while the box will recoil in the other. When the ring reaches the end of the box, it'll bounce backwards, and the box's recoil direction will switch too. This is action-reaction, also known as Newton's third law of motion, and in normal circumstances, it restricts the box from wiggling back and forth. But, Burns asks, what if the ring's mass is much greater than when it slides in one direction than the other? Then it would give the box a greater kick at one end than the other. Action would exceed reaction, and the box would accelerate forwards. This mass change isn't prohibited by physics. Einstein's theory of special relativity says that objects gain mass as they're driven towards the speed of light, an effect that must be accounted for in particle accelerators. A simplistic implementation of Burns' concept would be to replace the ring with a circular particle accelerator in which ions are swiftly accelerated to relativistic speed during one stroke, then decelerated during the other. 
but Burns thinks it would make more sense to ditch the box and rod and employ a particle accelerator for the lateral as well as a circular movement, in which case the accelerator would need to be shaped like a helix. Frictionless space. According to New Scientist, the helical chamber would have to be pretty large, around 200 meters or 656 feet long and 12 meters or 40 feet in diameter, to be precise. And it would need to generate 165 megawatts of energy to produce one newton of thrust, which is about the same force you use to type on a keyboard. That's the equivalent of a power station to produce the force required to accelerate a kilogram of mass per second squared. For that reason, the engine would only be able to reach meaningful speeds in the frictionless environment of space. The engine itself would be able to get 99% the speed of light if you had enough time and power, says Burns. So a lot of input for a teeny output. It's inefficient, but Burns notes the efficiency problem in his presentation and also adds that his work hasn't been reviewed by experts and there might be errors in his math. Propellantless proposals aren't new. In the late 1970s, Robert Cook, a US inventor, patented an engine that supposedly converted centrifugal force into linear motion. Then in the early 2000s, British inventor Roger Shawyer proposed an EM drive, which he claimed could convert trapped microwaves into thrust. Neither concept has been successfully demonstrated and both are widely assumed to be impossible due to violation of the conservation of momentum, a core physical law. Martin Tajmar at the Dresden University of Technology in Germany, who has performed tests on the EM drive, believes the helical engine will probably suffer the same problem, saying, quote, that all inertial propulsion systems, to my knowledge, never worked in a friction-free environment. The machine makes use of special relativity unlike the others, which complicates the picture. But, quote, unfortunately, there is always action-reaction. Burns has worked on design in private without any sponsorship from NASA, and he admits his concept is massively inefficient. However, he says there is potential to harvest much of the energy that the accelerator loses in heat and radiation. He also suggests that the way that momentum could be conserved, such as in the spin of the accelerated ions. Caveat engine. Even if the engine works in practice, it'll have other disadvantages. According to New Scientist, a helical engine that was 200 meters long would generate about as much force as typing on a keyboard. So while Burns might be right that it could accelerate to near light speed, it would take a very long time. Burns says that he's aware of the risks involved, as with the EM drive and cold fusion, but you have to be prepared to be embarrassed. It's very difficult to invent something new under the sun that actually works, he adds. Burns concluded by saying that they don't exactly have the blueprints for a fully functional space travel engine here. What we do have is a piece of groundwork that could be used to develop such an engine. What we have is dreams of the stars. Let me know what you think about the helical engine by leaving a comment in the comment section below.